Okay, question 10. We're looking at equivalent fractions here. We want to find any fraction that's equivalent to these things. So let's have a quick look at um, something that looks like this. So if we look at this diagram here, we can see this is divided into quarters. And three of them are shaded, and so we've got three quarters. If I split every one of my quarter into two bits, and this one here, I've now got how many pieces? I've got two, three, four, five, six. I've got eight pieces overall. So now the number of shaded bits I've got is six eighths. Still the same diagram and still the same amount shaded. I've just drawn the lines in a different place. So I've changed the numerator of the fraction and made it twice as big. I've got twice as many, I've got six pieces now, but each piece is actually uh, smaller. So I've actually times the denominator by two. I've actually turned my shape into the four pieces into eight pieces. If I did it again, I've actually got 24 sections in the whole shape, including this gap here, and I've shaded eight of them. So again, if I've changed the numerator, I've changed the number of little pieces I've got, obviously the total number of little pieces in the whole shape will have changed by the same amount. So equivalent fractions, these fractions represent the blue bit is still the same, even though the numbers look different. They're in the same relationship or the same proportion. Okay, here we have got uh, thirds, because I've divided it into three sections, and I've got two thirds. Now, if I divided each of my thirds into three, uh, thirds in now into three pieces, I've now got nine bits overall, or ninths, and six of them are shaded, so I've got six out of nine. Still the same amount of shading, still the same shape overall. Times the numerator by three, times the denominator by three. Now, if I change my shape now into one, two, three, four, five, six, I've now got thirty-six. I've now got thirty-six. Um, and how many have I got shaded? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got twenty-four out of my thirty-six have been shaded. Still the same amount. What have I done to the numerator? Well, from six to twenty-four, it's quadrupled or times by four. So I've treated the denominator in the same way. It works out backwards too. So in this shape, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. I've got thirtieths, thirty little pieces in my shape, and eighteen of them are shaded. If I remove some lines, okay, I've divided the numerator by three and the denominator by three. So that's the same as six tenths. If I removed every other line. I've now got the same as one, two, three, three fifths. So I've divided the numerator by two and the denominator by two. All right, so let's have a look at some of these. Let's pick a fraction here. Well, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Okay, so if I look at all of these, all of these are actually the same fraction, even though they look very different. They're all the same fraction. But that's why I put equals between them. So this one is not so straightforward how to get to the top and bottom, but I could simplify these fractions. All these fractions are equivalent. Okay? We don't have to do anything quite so tricky on the test. Let's go back and look at the test question. We just have to write any uh, fraction which is equivalent to the one we've got here. So remember, we have to treat the numerator and denominator in the same way. So we don't change the shape, we just change the way the fraction looks. So I could choose any fraction. I could choose to write, well, if I'm going to double the numerator to 4, I'm going to double the denominator to 10. Okay? And this one, I'm actually going to do something different. I'm going to halve the numerator. So, and therefore I'm going to halve the denominator. So it's 2 to 6. Equally, I could halve it again. So 1 and a third. I'm not going to halve it, and there's loads of fractions I can choose. All of these, there's many, many answers that you can give, and you just had to give only one that worked. In this one, I'm going to, oh, let's do this one first. In this one, I'm going to look at number of fives that go into the top and the bottom. Okay? So the number of fives that go into the top, I'm going to divide the top by five, which is seven. Divide the bottom by five, or how many fives go into 100? 
20. They're both equivalent. How many fives go into this, or how many fives go into 15? 3. How many fives go into 20? 5. Well, just one point of note. In each case, when you reduce the numbers to the smallest form, the smallest whole numbers, you can reduce it to what's called simplest form. That's, for example, like this one here is simplest form, and so is this one, because the numbers are low as they go without becoming decimals or fractions themselves. This one here is the simplest form, or in this case, this one's the simplest form. These two are equivalent. This one we prefer because the numbers are the smallest. The same here. The red ring one, the simplest form, is the one we prefer because it's in the lowest numbers. But all three of these are equivalent. That's equivalent fractions.